In the sleepy community of Melbourne Beach, the serene sounds of the Indian River lapping against the banks at Rickman Park can soothe the soul, and might be the reason why at least one soul has chosen to stay there. Here in Brevard County, we're very fortunate to have several historic homes preserved for the public to enjoy. There's the 1891 Pritchard House in Titusville, the 1875 Sam's House Cabin on Merritt Island, and the 1908 Rossiter House Museum and Gardens in O'Galley. Each of these homes has its own unique and interesting history. The 1890 Reichman House in Melbourne Beach is one of the oldest homes in Brevard County. It was originally built by Captain Rufus W. Bojan for a man named Jacob Fox. Both of these men were early investors in the development of the area. They were both part of the Melbourne Beach Company, which was later called the Melbourne Beach Improvement Company. The home is a, a sturdy two-story structure built of native pine and cypress. Originally, the home had no electricity and the only water available came from an artesian well. The Fox family were basically snowbirds. They, they came here seasonally to enjoy hunting and fishing and life on the water. At that time, there were very few permanent residents in Melbourne Beach. In 1908, the house was acquired by Garrett E. Reichman, who was also part of the Melbourne Beach Company. Reichman was a winemaker from Brockton, New York. He moved here with his wife and his son, Lawrence, in 1908. Their daughter, Ruth, joined the Reichmans two years later after she graduated from Vassar College. As Melbourne Beach developed, Ruth Reichman became very active in the community. She volunteered as a private nurse in the town for many years. When Ruth Reichman died in 1979 at the age of 89, she left the Reichman House to the city of Melbourne Beach, and today the home is well-preserved in a public park there on the Indian River. While she may have left the house to the town, some speculate that Ruth is still in the house. Members of the Melbourne Beach Historic Preservation Society told us that guests at the bed and breakfast across the street complained that they felt like someone was watching them from the home's second floor window. And children often remark about seeing things move inside the house. Just out of curiosity, have you ever heard any stories about the house being haunted or any ghosts appearing to visitors? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Well, at one time we had a little mannequin sitting on the chair, but the children would see it and they would say it would move and they were really, I mean, their parents would say they'd be frightened, but they'd come in and we'd have all these cute little fingerprints in the front window because they were looking in to see I had a tea set sitting on a little table at one time. And they would say, she moved, or she waved, and stuff at that. But that, I don't know. We haven't heard that so much, I guess, since we moved the table out of the, that area and the tea set. Um, the bed and breakfast, the new one, um, also said they had um, complaints from a, they wanted to know from the town who was over there at night because someone complained one of their guests and I said well we can't, we can't close the windows <laughs> so uh, but that's it so that was about a year ago. the bed and breakfast is across the street and guests saw or thought they saw somebody Something. in the house yes but there was no one because it's it's locked unless one of us are here or the town and they're only here during working hours Our investigation team spent two separate sessions inside the house. Ruth, are you here? One during the day. No. Sometimes it takes a few. What? She's here. What? What just <laughs> happened? One at night. Well, our Reichman house, uh, it. It's an awesome house. It's got such a creepy vibe when you go up at nighttime. Um, you see from the pictures that we took there and posted, it's just, it just has a real creepy feel. And you go inside, and it's extremely hot upstairs. So we just set up our cameras and our recorders upstairs. Uh, our thermal imaging camera was useless upstairs. So we set up um, based on the belief that it was Ruth that was there, Ruth Reichman. Um, and we had our dousing rods because we weren't really getting a whole lot. So we had our dousing rods out to get yes and no answers. 
and uh, to try and find wherever they were. And we were still we weren't getting a whole lot, so we set up, did an EVP session. We didn't really hear a whole lot there at the time. So uh, we broke everything down, and then upon review, um, based on the evidence that we got, there was uh, childlike laughter, uh, childlike voices, a female voice. The fact of the matter is we don't know, right? We can, we can guess and we can hem and haw one way or the other, but at the end of the day, nobody really knows. It's all educated guesses. Uh, Reichman House, uh, it's inconclusive as to whether or not there's any, anything actually there or if it's powerful enough to come through. Uh, we want to go back and uh, change our approach to better suit a child entity. Maybe some trigger objects, but some toys, and questions that are geared toward a child. Ruth, tell me again, did you look out the window at people outside? So the next time you're driving by Rickman Park in Melbourne Beach, be sure to wave to the house. Ruth might just be watching from the window and waving back. <laughs>